Let's face it, Jimmy. You bought a dog? No, I haven't. You bought a dog? No, Jimmy? I haven't. No, I haven't. Don't be bad, dear. <laughs> She's a good girl. <laughs> She's going to behave herself. I know she is. I hope. <laughs> I must be here. <laughs> I can't get a gear. I'm, I can't drive. Oh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I need a mechanic. My tractor stopped. <laughs> Any used boys to chain me? She's just behaving herself all right here now when I'm sitting steady. Ah, like. oh, I spoke too soon, hold on. She's having got a chance. Mikey thinks he has, he's went and bought this here, Mikey's went for par. He's went for par, par over what? He, he need for, give him 40 acres to turn that rig around. <laughs> you hold him steer, and you, don't give you 40 acres or you'll never get it finished. <laughs> How do you get on there? <laughs> get on. <laughs> it's security, it's security to keep, to keep riff raff out. Eh? Oh, look at this bottle of poo. <laughs> I need three sets of tyres for three big tractors. I personally like a mix and there's no harm in that. Like. Right. You have expensive taste. Donkey! No! Jimmy Doc! One. See, that sign there says huge likely. That one was put there just for Jimmy, look, because he's at the bottom of the hill. I am committed to the cause, but committed to the cause. Will we stop at a shop here and grab a sandwich? Or... No, I've got it, I've got it. Are you sure about that? Oh aye aye, it's time to whip ass now. Mikey, you see, I told you, the deer's the best. The deer's the best, baby. The deer's the best. <laughs> That's very hard being the legend, you know. She's not all bad, you know. She, but she's right and bad. <laughs> in the trailer, Jimmy, in the trailer. Don't worry, Jimmy, I'll get the wee bit you missed. I should carry on, Donkey. There's a bit more up your brain. And now, fairness, hey, you never seen a wee thing going to sleep. We'll see now, Donkey, what the old TW is worth. Go on, Jimmy. Jimmy, you found the high gearbox. The only way is up, <laughs> baby! Hey, I've not known the legend for my singing voice, I'm known for my handwork on the steering wheel. I can't believe it, like, you have to break me wanda, break me air conditioning, and now Maggie's broke me knob. <laughs> Give me a bit of paper. <laughs> <laughs> A few donkeys have died. <laughs> a few? I think you left the gate open all night and they got out. We're in 73 horse left. Oh, she's all there, she's living! <laughs> Every horse he's living! That is yours, donkey! Mine's 181. No, no, 131, you mean? His printer's not working. Right, well, I've got something to light the fire with later. That thing is unreal! Why would anybody want a buck rig with a tractor? I'm not seeing the advantages of it at the minute, don't you? You tell me where you want the stuff and I'll put it there for you. Up here. Up here, Jimmy. This is where we want it. The black wheat out of her. I'm sorry. No, I am sorry. <laughs> no matter how much Donkey says, the air con pump didn't break the driver use, it broke because it was goosed. And the one who fell out because the tractor's old and can't stand the heat. Not driver air, no matter what oh, he says. Yeah. So the donkey. case oh, is number donkey. one. For the Jimmy. case has not Jimmy. broke down. So much for the no mechanical bother. <laughs> <laughs> 
double chopping up women again. Oh, what a tracker. Eh, no window, no air con. Just pure heaven. So everybody, I've lost track now of where we're at in our series, but we just finished in the last one talking about old school and Grassman old school DVD about about how it changed the mindset of what was achievable, what what people wanted to see or what how we perceived what people wanted to see. I mean I think it's very important to, to get it out there. I think in any business, and I'm saying this with ten years hindsight behind us now, there is no right and wrong answer. All you can do is try and enjoy what you do, create some content, and all you can do is hope that people enjoy it. And at this time, you know, coming off the back of our first, I suppose it's five productions now, it's six DVDs, but it's five different productions, if that makes any sense. And we're starting to really learn a little bit about markets. We're starting to realize that we have made mistakes big mistakes and we've learned a lot of valuable lessons but for me one of the biggest lessons learned coming into without a shadow of a doubt one of the most popular DVDs we have ever made one of the biggest lessons was was that young boys love old tractors as well as old boys so the very brave decision was made and I must be very honest about this there wasn't a lot of money floating about. I know people can think differently. People can think what they like. It doesn't really matter from that perspective. But the decision was made to try and do like a Top Gear style challenge. And it has been referred to that for many, many years. And it was just basically simply the idea was three men, three tractors have a bit of old fashioned crack. But we needed three tractors. And that led to this DVD.
it just took things to a completely different level for us. Not my favourite DVD. I'm going to be 100% honest with everybody. It's a strange one. But most certainly one of the most popular DVDs talked about to this very day when I am out and about at any show or any public gathering or on official, whether it's official grassman business or not official grassman business, it makes no difference because I can't really hide. But people will always talk about how they love this DVD. And the first tractor, the Case Magnum, the 7140, we still have it, we still love it. Um, was literally bought at an auction without seeing it. We just made the decision we had to have a go. We had a budget. We bought it, we got it home. It worked perfect. <laughs> it was bang on. It was like, you can't buy stuff at an auction and it'd be perfect. Well, that was, it really was perfect. Ironically, we tried to buy the same tractor off a dealer that was trying to sell it before the auction, but we couldn't talk to him at all. So we ended up getting it at the auction. So we had looked at it, but we'd only really seen pictures. Second tractor that was bought, the Infamous 4755. It was bought alongside a 7710 John Deere. The sort of two had to come together. And I remember the day I first seen that tractor. <laughs> I had driven 3050s, 3050s, 3350. I had never driven a 3650. They were big tractors. And then I seen the 4755. I remember the second I sat down in the seat the first time looking at it and I looked at this bonnet and I just thought, oh my goodness, unreal. And the way it really worked out was, I'm not going to lie, going to tell you all the truth, we had a budget. Okay, there was a deal, we cut, couldn't go above 16 grand on a tractor, that was the deal. This tractor was working out a little bit more than 16 grand. So the only way I could get this tractor to 16 grand was to buy the 7710 as well. Because I was able to do a deal with the fella. So technically, I bought it for 16 grand. We'll let the smart ones work that one out. So I can stand up, drink my coffee and say, I did it right, sort of. If I'm getting red here, you'll know I didn't, but we'll not get into that. We, we bought that tractor. We got it home. Oh, man, loved it. Absolutely loved that tractor. From the moment it arrived at HQ, it was a John Deere. It was big. It was beautiful. It was me. That tractor, I often say and try and explain to people, that tractor sums me up. Maybe not the fastest in the world, but it never gives up. It has guts, it keeps going. And it always was like that, even in the DVD. And then we needed a final tractor. We knew Mad Mike was prepared to come and drive the case. We knew it would work well for Mike. We knew it was, you know, the old school case was considered, a Magnum was, was, I don't know, did you get better? Let's be honest, I understand we have different camps, but did, did, did you get better? To me, that tractor was so far ahead of its time. So we'd make for it. We knew at the time, I actually didn't want to be driving in this DVD, because as I say, it was a tough time for me, for personal reasons. I didn't really want to be involved, but I was kind of told I had to. <laughs> and that's the thing about grass men. We work together and whoever's in the team at the time, we will bring them all around the table, we will have a chat and we will go with the decision made. I won't always, we won't always be that I pull rank. That's one of the reasons I love grass men and love the fact that I would be very open about what we're doing. So I was told I had to drive it. So I reluctantly agreed. And then we asked Jimmy Doc would he come on board? And he said he would. So we needed a tractor for Jimmy Doc, and at this point, Jimmy, to everyone, was this young idiot who drove about in a big 7050, and it was loud, and he was just mad. And he was mad, still is mad, just mad. So we needed something that 
for me was blue. It needed to put out loads of reek, brackets, smoke, <laughs> for anyone who doesn't understand. So we needed this. And it had to look good, but it had to be different. Couldn't just be the same as anything else. I trolled through every auto trader, every online thing, and I found this TW35 that looked essentially the same as it did right at the very end of its life with us. The big front, the black grill, and it was described as a non-runner. So, not to be too disheartened, I didn't care. I was buying this tractor in my head. I jumped into my car. It was in the far side of England. I got the boat. I drove all the way over, looked at it, thought about it, started the engine. The engine started first turn, gave it one blast of the accelerator, and it filled the wee shade with smoke. And I said, that's it. I walked in. I told the fella he was talking absolute nonsense and it was a non-runner and we'd all this work to do to it and the deal was done. We were bringing this TW home for Jimmy. Poor Jimmy. <laughs> With a 7140 Magnum. <laughs> Power shift, air conditioning, absolutely everyone works with this 4755 that's meant to be 190 horsepower at the time. Power shift, Everything, air conditioning wasn't working, was an issue, but everything was perfect. And then we had this non-runner. But I said Jimmy Dog wouldn't care because as soon as the black smoke would come out, he would just be giggling like a child. That ran true. So we got the, the three tractors back to the yard. I think there is footage or picture somewhere of the lorry arriving in with the, the, the TW on it and us starting to try and fix this TW. <laughs> that tractor was in a mess folks. The internals of that tractor was a complete and utter disaster. It was stripped down, there was people had tried to weld centre bits into cogs, there was cogs that were smooth as a baby's bum. Ah, oh. What had I done? And that was the sentiment that kept getting fired back at me. What have you done, YouTube? And <laughs> <laughs> These people will never understand. Two days before we filmed Two Legends and a Donkey, we were up all night screwing that thing apart, trying to get it literally to work. And the ironic thing is, we got it. I had took it a few miles down the road. We were like, we have got here, we have got it sorted. Parked up, expecting it to go well. And what happened in the, the, at the start of that film can never be, never be repeated. It was impossible to, for, it just stopped working. <laughs> as soon as Jimmy got into it, it just started breaking down everywhere. Jimmy Duck! <laughs> oh, Jimmy, what did you buy that for? I think the Calvinist has went to your head. <laughs> Jimmy, what's this? Uh. That's the fine tuning. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> what, what have you had to do here? <sighs> right, we'll start. You do know you had only 16 grand to spend. Well, we had only 16 grand to spend, but the tractor was only seven. But you did realize you weren't getting to keep the rest. Ah, oh, no, no, the seven was for the tractor, but it was a non-runner and I thought to myself, well, Sure, look at her. Sure, you had to have her. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, non-runner, I thought, only a clutch. So then, so, 
with the help of these guys, splitzer, clutch. So then the shaft was a wee bit more, so we took it out. The end was missing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. We delved further and deeper. We found the end. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that at, Jimmy? <laughs> that, that end used to belong to this cog that used to have teeth. <laughs> which did have the hydraulic pump, which <laughs> was welded. <laughs> no way. It was welded. Slight. <laughs> and then, further meaning that there was teeth to go out here and there, and then that was connected to this low pressure pump, which we didn't know was wrong at the time. So we put all that on, put it all back together. Bob's your uncle, we're away. Jimmy, have you driven yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> so this really is the moment to drift? Yeah. Well, there was them bit of box of bits there too. We put them in just for safety. What do you mean them bit of box of bits for safety? <laughs> PTO clutches and stuff. Well, there was a couple of PTO clutches missing, but sure. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, 1987 tractor's going to have a few bits missing. <laughs> <laughs> Right, how much did you spend on her? Overall, was, there was 6,000 worth of bits and mechanic on her, so 13,000. So still 3,000 for stuff to go wrong yet. <laughs> <laughs> but look at her. <laughs> Moment the truth, Jimmy. Uh, well, I suppose, yeah. Cross your fingers and your toes. She'll never go, Jimmy. She'll never go. <laughs> the stress that that was putting through because you have to understand from my point of view and one of the reasons I was scared of getting into the tractor at that time was I knew I had invested all this money all this money into these three tractors and I was panicking that this DVD wouldn't work that we couldn't make it happen that, you know as soon as Jimmy's tractor started breaking down which I now laugh at which all of you are maybe laughing at when you've seen it I was actually pancaking it, <laughs> panicking. It's like, what are we going to do now? How are we going to do it now? And there was a big lesson in Two Legends and a Donkey for me was that I have to learn to let go a little bit and you can't control everything from the, from the tractor seat. And it wasn't all straightforward. And we got there. And I think for me, I struggled, but the DVD did not struggle. We had, um, at that time, we didn't own a drone. We hired in a professional drone flyer, LAX, I think he's called. He did a great job. He came down um, and spent a full day with us. He was a superb pilot. He, um, we had a massive crew of people on site filming that week. And um, we had so much content from this, this DVD. It was scary. We had JF involved with harvesters, we had wagons, and but it was just hard, it was hard to let go. And there were personal medical reasons for me at that time as well, and it was just difficult now, it was a difficult time. But you know what, we got through it, and eventually, I think on the second day, I started to relax and enjoy myself, and I think it started to come through. You could see me smiling again in the, in, in the tractor, and I was always a little bit nervous, and. But we got there. We got there, and as I say, fantastic weather. It was three of the warmest days the country has seen. I think even today, I can't remember much warmer. And uh, we got there, and by the time it was all over, it was just, it was superb. And those three tractors will be famous forever and a day based on that DVD. There is absolutely no question about that. And we finished it off on the beach. What a surreal setting to be up there on the beach. And again, this is ironic, we were struggling to get permission to get onto the beach. The, the certain person who got us that permission and got us onto the beach is now Grass Men's General Manager. And uh, it's amazing how those relationships start and they come through. And uh, you know, so like, 
if Denise, if you're watching this here, why did you let us into that beach that night? You get yourself well caught. But as this here is being made, Denise is currently off uh, on maternity leave with uh, baby number two. And uh, she's currently looking after young Lynn. And because of all this coronavirus that's floating about, we're all scared to go and see her. And we're not allowing her to come and see us. And it's a bit unfair because we all want a cuddle. But anyway, that's nothing to do with two legends and a donkey. But that's again how another employee ultimately came to be at Grassmill.